Happy birthday. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to the birthday bash. Look, you got to lean into it. you got to lean into it whenever it's your birthday. And I just want to tell you, look, as you join us, uh, we're going to be here for about, I don't know, half an hour, 40 minutes. I just want to tell you that I'm 56. I'm not a guy who's not ashamed to talk about his age. And I'm 56. And I like to kick, stretch, and kick. I'm 56. <laughs> anyway. We are going to make some birthday cake ice cream today. We're going to actually make a cake. Uh, hard for me to see on the monitor who's there. So let's have a bit of a shout out if you're on. Tell me how many eyes are on. Also, tell me uh, where you're tuning in from uh, would be great. Tell us where you're tuning in from, city and state. We'd love to be able to greet you on this, uh, look, a bit of a fall slash wintry afternoon here in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, so, city and state, tell me where you're from. New York City. It's up to you. Kick, you kick, your kick, you kick, stretch your... Uh, Damien, nice to have you here, mate. Uh, look, uh, and as you see in this city and state, let us know where you're at. We're going to be making again. Sorry, Madeline, you're saying? Atlanta, Georgia. Some beautiful pecan weather in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, look, we're going to make some birthday cake ice cream here today. And uh, we're also going to make an actual cake. So um, let us know again where you're from. Ask questions as we go. That's the beauty of the live stream set up here. We've got Madeline Elizabeth behind the counter. We've got Frank here who's uh, helping us broadcast. Uh, we do all of these things live stream. We've got a live stream class coming up in December. Uh, live classes coming up, scoopschool.com. Uh, let us know, uh, hey, where you're from, what you'd like to do. So let's start with uh, our birthday cake base. So we're going to do something a little bit different today. I It's all about me today. I love uh, blue as my favorite color. Um, and uh, look, we're going to make a blue and white marbled birthday cake ice cream. Not just simple in the machine out. No, we're going to marble it up a little bit. Um, so I think you go into settings and you can change the camera that way. Um, so we're going to get a bucket out to start with. And we're going to make our, we've got two bases to make today. We've got our, both of them are going to be birthday cake flavored, flavored. Um, one of them is going to be a white birthday cake. And the other is going to be a, a blue birthday cake. We're going to start with our white base. Uh, and again, uh, we're keeping an eye on the comments here. So leave a comment if you have any questions. Say that again. We do have a question. Question away. Okay, Patrick, yes. What do you think or what's your take on a Frankenstein theme or classic monster ice cream parlor? A classic monster ice cream parlor. Look. It's always been my feeling that um, in any kind of theme place, look, you've heard me say it before. I'll say it again on my birthday. Um, look, there's three things that bring people into an ice cream business. The three ends, I call them. End this way. End product. Your product's got to be good. Your engagement's got to be good. And your environment environment is like the third stool or the third leg of a three-legged stool and it's really important to have it so i say go for it i do think you want to make sure you read your demographic uh, you want to make sure that you are um you know leaning into that making sure you're not scaring little kids but look in the grand scheme of things you got to also think about are you so locked into that concept that you can't kind of move away from it or pivot Maybe light Frankenstein or light monster. Monster light. Uh, look, we are using as our birthday cake base, I've got a 14% base here. Plain base, no vanilla, no nothing in it. We're going to use, uh, today we're going to use a bit of eye rice, birthday cake batter base or cake batter base. A lot of different things. You've got companies like Oranger and Weber and all of these places that make something similar. Um, today we had a little bit of eye rice on hand. I'm going to put, generally speaking, I generally put um, a cup and a half per gallon. So if I'm using a base like this, 
um, I will use about a cup and a half per gallon. I've got about one gallon of mix here. So I'm going to put around about a cup in here. And again, you will do this to, to taste initially to come up with your own base. But then after that, you'll want to basically document this so you really know what you're doing. You get consistency the whole time. Uh, we'll grab our whisk. So this will make our cake batter base, our white base. Now, we're going to do this again, but we're going to make a blue base uh, in order to basically do our marbled ice cream. It's going to make two bases. There's our first base. It's our white cake batter base. We're going to get a second Cambro here, and we're going to put that same mix in, 14%, but this time we're going to make it blue. Blue, birthday cake blue for the birthday buoy. Birthday buoy. Again, 14% base. We're just a smaller batch. So we're just doing four quarts or one gallon per base. Per base. So I'm going to take that same birthday cake batter or birthday batter. Again, about a cup and a half per gallon. Uh, and then we're going to whisk it up. Now, our secret ingredient, we love secret ingredients. And uh, look, if you've been in the Scoop School before, if you've watched any of our videos, tell me, Special Birthday Boy Live Edition, tell me what I can put in here to enhance the flavor of the birthday cake base. Type it in the comments. What can I put in here to enhance the birthday cake flavor. Enhance the birthday cake flavor. Now, I'm hoping for some good answers here because if you're new to the industry or if you've been in it a long time, you should know what a great flavor enhancer is. What have we got down there? Anyone? Some rum. Some rum? Who's that? That's a cat and yeah, now, I'm not saying you can't put rum in here. Damien said, salt. Damien said salt. I like that, Damien. What else have we got in there? Vanilla will do. Vanilla will do. Who said that? that ah, nice. Well, look, vanilla is what we're going to use today. We are going to use uh, a vanilla here. And today's choice, Tahitian vanilla. Tahitian vanilla. It's got a beautiful fruity. Uh, it's got heliotropine in it, naturally. Um, and it tends to be more of the fruity, florally uh, 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 flavor notes of all of the vanilla. So we're going to put, again, if I'm putting, if I'm making a vanilla ice cream, then I would put about one ounce per gallon. If I'm enhancing other flavors, I'm going to put a half ounce per gallon. And I've got two uh, single gallons here. So a half ounce in this one over here and a half ounce over here. A little bit more than a half. Catherine said, oh, no rum. Catherine said, no rum. It's a little early in the day for rum. And Catherine, to tell you the truth, I'm not a drinker, so I wouldn't really appreciate the uh, rum essence that's in here. But look, to each their own, to each their own. Now, what I'm going to do here is make one of these blue. Now, there's a couple of different ways to do that. The, what, what you don't want to do is to get the standard off-the-shelf um, blue food coloring from the grocery store. It's never strong enough. It'd just be an off-blue kind of thing, make it very pale. You want a good, rich, punch-in-the-face blue. Punch-in-the-face blue. So we are going to use a product uh, from Green Mountain Flavors today. It's called Spirulina. And uh, if anyone remembers the old Shaggy song, Carolina or Carolina, well, this is what we're putting here. We're putting a spirulina in. Blue Mountain flavors, spirulina. Now, from a Blue Mountain, <laughs> Blue Mountain flavors, Green Mountain flavors. You know what I always, I always also make a mistake when I'm talking about Green Mountain flavors. I always call it Stan Sitwell instead of Stan Sitton. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Stan. Stan Sitton. One of the most knowledgeable men in ice cream. Stan Sitwell is from the uh, uh, great uh, comedy series um, 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 in development. 
something in development. 56 years old. I'm 56. Now, if I was going to make this blue for a two and a half gallon, I would use um, two tablespoons, two teaspoons. It's a very, very fine powder. Uh, now, I'm just making it for one gallon each. So one tablespoon um, for, let's put, we'll make this one the blue one. And you'll see how intense it really is. Uh, we'll put that uh, teaspoon in as well. So one tablespoon, one teaspoon per gallon. Drop that in there. Now have a look at how blue this turns. All natural spirulina. Um, again, it's from Green Mountain Flavors. We'll give this a turn. And you'll see it turns this beautiful, rich blue. Um, now, tell, I'll tell you right now, your call as to how much you use and how blue you want it. If you want to make it blue from an all-natural standpoint, spirulina is the best way to go. You need to make sure that all of that powder hydrates very well. Now, if you're not overly concerned about the artificialness of the color, and let's face it, blue um, isn't a natural, uh, bright blue is not a natural color occurring in, in uh, nature. You can also go to the bakery supply store and you can get yourself some, this is called uh, Chef Master cake icing color. It's very, very concentrated. So we're gonna put a little bit of this, you don't need much just a couple of little drops in there to make it just kind of enhance that color. And you can see straight away, we've got a beautiful blue. I use this for Superman ice cream, uh, for other types of ice cream. Your, uh, what do you call it? Uh, what's the horse with the thing on its head? A unicorn ice cream. I'm 56 and I can kick, stretch and kick. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Uh, okay, so we're going to put this in. Now, I cheated a little bit, and I uh, already made a batch of this just to show, uh, to kind of be quick. But at the same time, I'm making a cake. I'm making a cake. So what you will do in this process, you'll put your uh, white base in first, which we will, uh, and then you'll prep your containers. But one of the things I did was I prepped a, a cake mold and I have it in the blast freezer. So this is my cake mold. I'm making a the same flavor, but in a cake as well. It's a product called Cold Mold, Steve Rapucci, uh, coldmolds.com. They've got all different sizes, all different shapes. Um, I've got here, I think it's a nine inch, eight inch. Uh, and I have put some of this cake ice cream in here first, put it in the blast. It's rock hard. And I'm going to put some cake in here to freeze it down a little bit. So I'm going to basically start freezing these. I've got some pound cake that I'm going to put in with some sprinkles for my middle layer. And then we're going to put the blue on the top. So that's kind of pre-prepped. Um, birthday cakes are very, very profitable, very easy to make. I'm going to pop this back in the blast. And uh, Madeline, I think we might move over to our batch freezer here. So let's go, uh, let's go horizontal. Eyes up here, everybody. Eyes up. Um, and uh, we've got a lot of different equipment here at the Scoop School facility. We're going to be using our Emery Thompson today. Thank you very much, Steve and the crew. Now, as I mentioned, um, I have uh, pre-made some cake in here, some birthday cake. I'm going to hit my menu here. I use the super premium setting. So let's just churn what I've got left in here. Put my refrigeration on. This is a water-cooled machine. So uh, I've got a water line coming into the back. It goes through, makes chills down the, con uh, the condenser, water line back out. Uh, and look, I've kind of pre-frozen it, if you will. So it's kind of chilling down in there. And uh, this is what we'd do first. So that white base that we used, we'd put in. Uh, and another thing too, is when you're actually in this process of making ice cream, right now you should be thinking, what container am I going to be putting this into? I've got a couple of buckets that are actually in the blast freezer. As we speak, 
when we extract this product out, it's going to be about 18 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, you want your bucket to be colder than that. Otherwise, you're going to get some heat shock come out. So what we're going to do is extract the white cake base first. So we'll have a white cake base ice cream. And then we're going to put our blue ice cream in right on the back of the uh, current one because we're going from light to dark. You don't need to um, clean out in between. You really want to plan your production so you don't have to clean out in between. Um, look, any questions, Madeline, while we're going here or anything? Ask questions as we go. We're happy to uh, ask questions during the birthday bash. Yes, Madeline. Great question. So when the customer's concerned about price than quality, let's say you're in a middle to lower socioeconomic area um, and you have a passion for making high, high quality ice cream, but let's face it, food cost is a big thing. You've got to really watch food cost. So um, I think there's a couple of different options you can do, but in the grand scheme of things, if your customer base is middle to lower socioeconomic, and let's face it, they're the people who spend money, uh, on, on uh, consumables and so forth, it's a good market to be in, then you wanna be very careful about your ingredient base. So I think there can be a range of ice creams, uh, your standards, your vanillas, chocolates, cookies and creams uh, that are relatively inexpensive to run. Then you may wanna lean more towards some of the extract based flavors rather than the purees and the uh, more exotics. I think you've gotta keep that food cost down. But can I tell you that in my opinion, I don't think people buy ice cream solely on price. They come to an ice cream shop not to buy ice cream. I know that's crazy to hear me say, but you don't come to an ice cream shop to buy ice cream. You come for an experience. You come for a celebration, a commiseration. Um, and so the ice cream in and of itself is important. But again, the environment, we had a question before about having a monster or Frankenstein's uh, theme shop. It's more about the environment. So sometimes I think we get so concerned about locking in what price needs to be. If you put more emphasis on the look and feel the environment of your shop, I really do feel as though um, you can get a lot of value out of that. I'm just going to test this now. Again, we kind of pre pre-froze this cake batter ice cream. So let's kind of have a look. That's beautiful, beautiful texture. So let me get my bucket out and we're going to extract out um, our cake batter ice cream. Out of the blast freezer, grab a bucket. Um, I only put a gallon in here. I've got a gallon and a half bucket. I'll grab two of these just to be sure, just to be sure, to be sure. Uh, we might go uh, vertical on this, Matt. I'll pull the camera up if you'd like, quick as you like. Oh, I don't want to break it. Okay, so uh, we'll need a spatula. We've got a nice cold bucket here. I'm going to open up our front gate. And this is our cake batter ice cream. Now, remember, we're doing a marbled ice cream today. Um, so we're going to, I'm going to bump up the extraction mode on this again. Nice uh, variable speed extraction process so I can increase the speed as this product comes out. Um, now, here's the thing. I'm going to pull this out a little softer because remember, this is only one part of the ingredient of our birthday cake ice cream. It's only one part. We're actually going to do a marbled blue and a, a marbled blue and white. Both of them are flavored birthday cake, so that's fine. They'll taste the same. But they look very different in their uh, in their visuality, if you will. And, and kids, look, I'll tell you that the marbled ice cream, the supermans, the unicorns, all these things, they do have a great appeal visually. It takes a bit of effort to make them, unfortunately. So you got one of these situations where, yeah, the kids love it, but there's a little bit more time, not so much cost, but time in making it, which is a bit of a hassle. So I'm just going to extract the last of this out, drop this down, shut it off. And then I'm going to put this not in the blast freezer. I'm going to put this in the regular freezer, in my storage freezer. Is my cake batter, white cake batter. 
The reason why I'm doing that is I don't want a rock hard ice cream. I want something that's still pretty supple, but it still needs to be somewhat firm. So I'm going to put this in the uh, regular storage freezer. It's kept at about, uh, let's say, minus 10, but it's a consistent minus 10. And then right on the back of that, I'm going to put our birthday cake blue in. So gates closed. Always make sure the gates closed. We're going to pour this in. Beautiful. Again, if you're just joining us, it's a cake batter ice cream base with some spirulina in it from Green Mountain Flavors. And we've also got a little bit of icing in there. We'll give it a bit of a scrape. Always good to make sure you're getting all of the value out of your bucket. This mix is about seven cents an ounce, weight ounce. So every ounce you leave in the bucket, seven cents. And that's your cost. Pop our lid down. We're going to hit our screen again, make ice cream. Uh, we'll do homemade this time. We'll ramp that up a little bit. We'll press start. Dasher goes. We'll hit our extraction button. And then we're off to the races again, making our blue. Making our blue. So, Madeline, let's go back a little bit. I'm going to bring the uh, table back around. Uh, questions, comments, concerns as we go here? Questions, comments, concerns. We'll clean up a little bit as we go. Love a bit of birthday action. Again, if you're joining us, let us know where you're joining us from. City and state, city and state. It's a bit early in the morning for Australia, so I'm going to pardon my own family for not logging on. I do expect you to be watching the replay, though. Very important. Okay. Now, we're going to now prep for going back to our cake. So let me get that cake base out. Uh, again, we've got a cold molds eight inch birthday cake here. Birthday cake round. And we're going to make a cake layer. Now I could put another blue layer right on top of this. I'm not going to do that though. I'm going to put a cake layer in. Now, there's a few different ways to do that. I'm a pound cake guy. I love my pound cake, nice and thick. Uh, angel food's too soft for me. If you get to the point where you're partnering up maybe with a local bakery and she can make for you, I say she, he, he or she can make for you, if they can make for you, an eight-inch round uh, cake that you can just drop in here, a blank, that would be very helpful. Uh, not always doable, though. So we're going to make one. I do like putting cake in the middle of ice cream cakes because it doesn't make it so hard to cut. Just very thin, thin layer. And we're going to place this as the middle layer of our cake. So place this all around. You want to see if you can get it right up close to the end. You don't want it too thick, but you want to make it so that when someone's cutting into the cake, they are can see a very even delineation between, just a little bit here, each layer of ice cream. And let's go a little bit right in the middle there. We're going to put some sprinkles on. Now remember too, as we do this, when you're filling a cake base, the bottom is the top. Because when we flip this out, it's going to be basically turned over and flipped out. So whatever flavor, color you want on the bottom of the cake needs to go on last. Again, silicon cake mold. I'm going to pop that back in the chest freezer. Sorry, Madeline, did you get that? Ready for our last level? Checking here on our birthday cake blue. Mm, birthday boy. And... Um, what we are doing as a variegate or pieces within our birthday cake flavored ice cream is we are going to actually cut up birthday cake. Now, there are some people who say, oh, Steve, look, look at this gaudy uh, icing. It's just bought from the grocery store. 
I say, that's me. That's my 56th birthday. I'm gaudy. I love white cake. I love the icing. And I'll tell you another thing. Just quickly, can I go, Madeline? I know you're about to walk off. But can I come back to our horizontal for a minute? For those of you who are joining late, I just wanted to let you know uh, that I'm 56. I'm not a man who doesn't want to talk about his age. I'm 56. And I can kick, stretch, and kick. I'm 56. Okay, back down here. <laughs> That's ridiculous. We're going to cut this cake up because it's going to be the pieces that are in our ice cream cake. I'm going to cut this up. I might take this off the tray that we got it from. We're going to crumble this through our ice cream as we uh, uh, turn or mix in our blue and white ice creams. So we're going to just cut it up so it's going to be easy to do that. A little bit of, uh, don't worry if it's kind of sticking together, it'll kind of turn quite nicely in the, um, in the actual cake. I can tell by the sounds of our bats freezer that we're ready to extract out here. Um, so I'm going to pull this aside. Let's I know there's a lot of uh, moving parts to this. We'll get another nice cold bucket. And we will, let's see how we're going here. Look at that, beautiful. We're going to extract our blue. Dash is off. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't say dash is off. Refrigeration is off now. And I'm pulling out my blue ice cream. Remember, this is our birthday cake ice cream that uh, is got spirulina in it. Um, if we wanted to do a huge batch, we would, but we're not going to. Um, I'll pull a little bit more out because we've got some to put on the cake. Okay, that's off. That's off. Beautiful. We're going to come back to the table now. Again, um, your call how firm you want to pull this out, but it needs to be supple enough so that uh, we can kind of marble it with the other ice cream. Look at that. Beautiful. Okay. So, back around here. Um, Elizabeth, you want to go and get that other bucket of ice cream that's out there? Uh, in uh, the, the cake batter in this one over here. And so, we are going to do two things. We're going to put the blue ice cream on top of our cake, which is the bottom layer of our cake. We want a nice even layer. So here's our blue. Just use the spatula. It's always a balance here of pressing it down so you don't have any air pockets, but not pushing uh, overrun out of it. We want a nice even layer. Um, and then this is going to have a little bit of wax paper on the bottom. Wax paper on the bottom here. And this is going back in the blast right now. That goes back in the blast right next to that fan. I don't know whether it'll be ready to kind of pop off as we go. Uh, and then we need a third bucket to put our marbling in. Questions as we go. Questions, comments, concerns. How are we feeling? Deepak, Deepak is on. Ah, uh, Deepak just came to Scoop School. He had a custom class. Uh, Deepak's opening up a business in India. We made some uh, flavors basically with ingredients that we can get in India. Deepak is the man. Thumbs up to Deepak. Thank you, mate. Um, okay, so let's put our marble product together. This is where you have two different buckets of ice creams, um, and then we're going to basically dollop here. We'll do two buckets at a time. No, we're not. We're just going to do one. And then we're going to take one, some from one and some from the other. 
and we're not going to mix it up a lot per se. We are just going to basically turn it, if you will, because we want to have some consistency in the product, but we also want to have a little bit of ribboning. So as we get to this point, I'm going to take some of my cake. We're going to put it around in here. Icing and all. Don't uh, be too ashamed about throwing the icing in there. Um, and then we're just going to turn it. Turn it a little bit. Let's throw some sprinkles in here as well. And we're just going to basically ribbon it a little bit. So you can just see a little bit of that curl in there. You don't want it so delineated that you can't see a little bit. And you might need to kind of tweak it as you go. I didn't bring as many spatulas as I wanted. So a little bit over the back here, a little bit over here. And we're just going to turn it. You don't want to mix it too much because you want that kind of nice delineation of color. I'll show you nice and close there. That's what we're kind of looking at. Now, yes, we're going to flatten it out a little bit. A little bit more birthday cake in here. Next layer. I like to do this every uh, one and a half inches or so, so that your customer, when you're getting a nice scoop of it, we're going to put the blue on top of the white and the white on top of the blue. Again, you want a nice even distribution of both as you go down. Again, a nice little kind of fold. You want to swirl. You don't want it to be too delineated. Look at that. Beautiful. Because remember, at the end of the day, that's the kind of effect that you want in the bucket. That nice swirled feature. Uh, last layer here. Again, our birthday cake. Questions, Elizabeth, as we go? Anything uh, happening on the comments section? Any more cities and states? I'd like to say that Deepak's probably the most exotic visitor that we have today. Oh, no. What's going on? Tell me about it. Someone else from India. Someone else from India? It's the Battle of India. Uh, nice to have you. Who is it? Can you pronounce their name? Shapur? Shapar? I can't read the screen. Say it out loud. Shabham. Nice to have you here. Okay, so we're going to put our last layer on here. Now, again, we're looking at where our white ice cream is and putting the blue on top of that. And then the last of our cake batter white ice cream on top of the blue. Remember, and going back to what uh, someone's question was, it's not overly about, um, it's about how the product looks. Got a nice amount of cake in there. Nice swirl, not too much. You want to make sure that there's that delineation. Use the back of the spatula just to kind of get it into the corners. We do want it flat. Last little bit of uh, cake on the top. Now, because it's on the top, we want it to be uh, nicely distributed. Distributed. So a bit of cake on the top here. Our last lot of sprinkles. Oh, look at that. Ladies and gentlemen, let me just wash off here. I've got to keep this glove on because I had uh, a little bit of uh, hand surgery yesterday. I'm 56. These things happen when you get older. Uh, let me put this up to you. So this is our birthday cake ice cream. Have a look at it, will you? Have a look at that. It's blue. It's white. They're two of my favorite colors. You've got real birthday cake ribboned through there. Look, if you wanted to put a very caramel variegate, a chocolate variegate, chocolate ribbon in there, you most certainly can. The world is your oyster. When it's your birthday, you can make whatever you want. But today, it's my birthday, and this is my favorite cake. I'm going to wipe that off on the sides, make it look good. I'm going to put a piece of wax paper. Elizabeth, can you grab that for me? Put that on the top, straight in the blast. Now, I, if I'm putting this in the blast freezer... I will write on the corner here, B-Day Cake or B-D-C um, with Sharpie. And I'll just put it in. I don't put a lid on it when I put it in the blast. I just put 
um, the wax paper on. I will put a lid on right on the top of this when it goes into storage. Um, but I want to make sure that I'm protecting the top, but also giving the product um, enough time to really get frozen without wind burning it. Without wind burning it. Um, the birthday cake is still working. So I may not be able to pop that out. Let's go horizontal, Madeline. We'll kind of clean up a little bit here. See if there are any questions, comments, concerns. Yes, question away. How much does a good batch freezer cost? That is a great question. Who asked that question, Madeline? Catherine. Catherine. Catherine's getting her money's worth today on the birthday bash. Um, Catherine, it depends. Let's talk a little bit about, I talk to a lot of people in class about this transition between your home ice cream maker uh, and the batch freezer process. Now, if you're working at home and you have just a countertop, it's generally a one quart or a half quart, um, the transition from that small machine up to a commercial machine is very dramatic. Um, each of these batch freezers are about 20 quarts. I have a 20 quart electro freeze over here. I don't sell them, I don't rep them. You probably should speak to somebody else. A 20 quart batch freezer is going to be somewhere in the realm of 22 to $30,000. I've got a couple of smaller machines here. The Emery Thompson we used today was a 12 quart. I've got a Carpajani 12 quart over here too. Again, they're going to be high teens, early 20s. So um, you can um, look at different options, but here's the thing. Elizabeth, can you get that egg up on here? This is going to be a a, a, a nugget of wisdom I'm going to share with you on my birthday. 56 years old. I can kick, stretch, and kick. I'm 56. Okay, so here's the thing. You can save money on a lot of different equipment. Uh, but this is what I talk about in class all the time. See this? This is a golden egg. Now, in my opinion, your custard machine here, your batch freezer, your soft serve machine is the only machine in your business that can actually make the product you're going to sell. So we ran product out of this today. Everything else as I look around our facility here, our dipping cabinet, our storage freezers, our reach-in refrigerators, three compartment sinks, stainless steel tables. I don't mind people saving money on them. I've saved money on them. You can go to equipment auctions. You can look at stores that are going out of business. I've always felt that the one machine or the goose that lays your golden egg, whether it be a batch freezer or a custom machine or a soft serve machine, the one machine that you've got that's laying this egg that you can then sell, I'm of the opinion you should buy new or at least have a warranty or some sort of coverage on it. Why are you waving? What? I, uh, this is what happens. Um, they're behind the camera and they're waving and doing stuff and I don't even know what's going on. The, oh, the reflection? Oh, you don't like the reflect your reflection in this. Um, anyway, so talk, I think you're looking at somewhere for a 20 quarter, anywhere between 20 and $30,000. Different machines have different functionality. Um, different machines have heating, timers, uh, variable speeds. They're the things I think you need to look at. You want to look at functionality, features and benefits. You also want to look at um, serviceability. Where do you get the parts from? Who services it? Uh, but I don't know. And again, when you come to Scoop School, I don't get commission. I don't get any kickback from any of the suppliers here. All of these good equipment companies, they're basically lending us equipment for us to use. I don't get any kickbacks. I want you to make that decision. I'm not going to steer you towards one or the other. Long answer to a short question. Next question. Patrick, uh, is it better to lease your... Uh, leasing versus buying. Great question, Patrick. Um, that's more for your um, accountant probably than me. I will tell you that in the two models... If you're leasing, then you've got that payment that basically goes into uh, your p and um, So as well as food cost, labor cost, all those other things, then you've got to factor in, okay, I've got a lease cost in here. If you're buying it outright, 
you own the machine, then it's on your capital expenditure, um, your asset register more so than your uh, regular payment. So it's a hard question. I know that if you've got the capital, it's probably easier from a tax perspective to kind of purchase it and then kind of write it off either immediately or as you go. Steve Thompson puts out a great email every uh, December kind of explaining the tax code and when to buy a batch freezer and when not to. Um, but it, it kind of depends. Not a great answer to that question. Sorry, Patrick, but it's nice to have you here on my birthday. Any other questions, comments? I am. I, I did want to kind of make sure that cake was a little bit more solid. I didn't get here early on my birthday and make one beforehand. Um, <laughs> bing, lights go out. Does that mean my lights are going out? Um, I'm going to pull it out of the batch and, and the blast freezer, see, see what it looks like. Um, and maybe just show you a little bit of what... Whee! Nearly dropped it on the ground. Okay, we're going to go uh, vertical here, Madeline. So I, it is firm-ish. It is firm-ish. may fall apart a little bit. But the idea here is with your cake, uh, you're going to uh, just grab the side of the cake here. And it may, again, I haven't had this in too long, so it might not be as crisp as it should be. But grab the side of the cake, hold the top. Come on, mate. And basically you, I can't see what's happening, but you pull down, pull this all the way off. Not bad, actually. Not bad. So this is what we're left with. And again, our white, our blue portion's a little soft. But that's what you're looking at here. Did you go and get that Lazy Susan, Elizabeth? Do you want to bring that over? Um, so this was rock hard. This is a little firmer. Generally, obviously, you'd leave it in there till it gets to the point. You'll put it on a Lazy Susan. Um, you can take the wax paper off and then basically decorate it. Now, I will tell you that... Invest good money in a, a decorator or having someone that can decorate your cakes. We sent some of our kids to the Wilson decorating course. Um, it will, it'll save you a lot of money. Let's cut into this. Again, the top spin in the batch freezer a lot longer than the bottom. It's kind of bowing out a little bit. But I did want to show you what it looks like here. I don't think it's going to work for us. Yeah, because it's pushing out of the bottom. Anyway. I'll, tr I'll, I'll, I'll send an update. Now I've pushed this out a little bit. I've got to put it back in. But again, that's what your cake will end up looking like. Again, you've got a nice delineated top and bottom. I've got cake in the middle with sprinkles. Uh, and you can kind of decorate this. I generally like to decorate this with Rich's Better Cream. Not the stuff that you need to... Um, not the stuff you need to hydrate. You want to make it so that it's RTU, ready to use. Let me put this back in the blast. Let's go horizontal again, Matt, and then we'll uh, answer some more questions. Okay. Hey, thanks for, thanks for sharing some of my birthday time with us. It's really great to have you here. Uh, next question. Okay, what quantity of cake would be what, what? Say that again, Liz. What quantity of cake? How much of a quantity of nuts or cake in a gallon of ice cream? Right, nuts or cake. So if you're doing a gallon of ice cream, and a gallon is four quarts, um, which is that smaller container that we had here. Just grab me that. Uh, this is a gallon and a half container. Um, and a lot of people are moving away from that three gallon container and making more ice cream in this. I talk a lot about rotation. You've got to keep rotation going. And so for the three gallons, yes, uh, your vanillas, your chocolates, your cookies and cream, you know you're going to go through them. Everything else I would strive to put in a gallon and a half. So with about a 60% overrun, you've got maybe three quarts of mix in. And I would probably layer in, again, um, your call on how much you want in there. I try and do a level every inch and a half. So let's say I was doing a butter pecan. I would do an inch and a half down here of my uh, butterscotch ice cream. Then I'd put a sprinkle of pecans, another inch and a half of uh, butterscotch pecans, and then tap that off. 
Now, I may want to use one of these spatches and just kind of make sure you don't need a delineated ribbon of pecans. Uh, that might look like uh, one of these Cambros. This is a one-sixth Cambro. Um, I might put that amount of pecans in, or maybe a little bit less. It depends. Um, the one thing I will tell you is that you really got to watch the cost side of it. You can have the most pecani, buttery pecans there is, uh, flavored ice cream. You've just got to make sure that you know what your price per weight ounce uh, of pecans are and make sure that you're factoring that in. Um, kind of a, like a wild answer to that question. Uh, any other questions, comments, uh, concerns before we sign off? Uh, again, I do want to thank you very much for joining us uh, here. I think we had a good time, did we not? Made some birthday cake ice cream, uh, made a birthday cake, blue and uh, white mixed cake batter base, one of my favorites. Um, anyway, we would love to see you in Scoop School one day. We do live classes in the building here. You'll actually get to do all of this yourself. We do live stream classes as well, so you can actually... Frank here uh, follows us around while we're running the course. Madeline, just say, uh, Frank, let's just say we're going to move over here to run, let's say, the Electrofreeze. Frank would come with us. Let's go, Frank. So on Frank here, we've got lights, we've got speakers, we've got the camera here, we've got a camera up here. It's a beautiful piece of equipment. So we might be moved working this, and then we might run the custard machine. Then we might say, hey, let's go over and look at the at the swirl freeze machine. And so Frank would come over here and we would actually run our swirl freeze machine. So look, I know a lot of people love to be in the room and there really is no um, uh, substitute for hands-on. But for a lot of people who are either side hustling or can't travel, have kids, uh, a live stream class is a great way to go. I think we've got some great technology to do it that way. Um, all of our information is on scoopschool.com. We'd love to see you in class one day. In-person classes, uh, uh, live stream classes, consulting. Deepak, that was with us a minute ago, came here for a single day custom class. He said, I kind of want to concentrate on this particular type of ice cream. I just want to book you for a day. We do that all the time as well. So uh, I'm heading off now. I think I'm going to have the rest of the afternoon off because uh, it is my birthday. Anyway, thank you very much for joining us. It's always great to do it a live stream. We love this industry, uh, and this industry has literally some of the nicest people in it. So thank you for being lovely. Thank you for tuning, us, uh, tuning in on us on our birthday bash. And as we always say at the end of our videos, how many people we have? I lost my monitor, Matt. How many people we got on? Okay, we got, so, so tell me, can someone type in what we say at the end of all of our YouTube videos. Let's see how many YouTube watches that we have here. Who's going to be first? What do we say at the end of all of our YouTube videos? What do we say? How do we sign off? Don't let me down here, anybody. Come on. We say, someone what? Someone types in, you are amazing. You are 56, but you can still kick. <laughs> I'm 56, but I can still kick. That's right. One more for the books. I can kick. I can stretch and kick. I'm 56. Uh, do we have the, uh, the answer to the question? No one has the answer to the question. Oh, you guys got to watch some more YouTube videos. This is what we say at the end of all of our YouTube videos. We say, keep on scooping, keep on scooping. Have a great weekend. Hopefully we'll see you on a live stream or in Scoop School very soon. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Have a great weekend. I'll just keep kicking and stretching until we go, Madeline. Stretch and kick. Shh.